Hello everyone! So before I begin, I just wanted to say that I hope you all are safe and healthy wherever you guys are and I also hope you guys enjoy this video. Oh, and this is my dog and I love her very much and her name is Ginger, so hi! So anyways, I'm just gonna let my dog chill right next to me as I tell you my story regarding celiac disease. So my name is Azia Leshi and I'm the daughter of Dr. Salvatore Leshi, who's the head of the science department at Beyond Celiac, which I'm really happy to say I'm currently supporting the work of the Beyond Celiac team starting or rather since the beginning of May of 2020. So I am 18 years old and actually graduated just this year. So yes, I'm part of the dreaded class of 2020, but I'm optimistic in that I'm going to be attending University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and I'm thinking about majoring in psychology. Um, some of my hobbies include singing, dancing, and meeting other people as well as spending time with other people. And um, I also live in Potomac, Maryland. So now we're going to be moving on to my actual journey with celiac disease. So. I was diagnosed with celiac disease when I was around eight or nine years old, and unfortunately the symptoms I was experiencing were very extreme, and um, and they included headaches, migraines, and really bad stomach aches to the point where it would lead to vomiting on many cases. And it was especially bad for me because back then my diet consisted of a lot of foods containing gluten because my family and I are Italian, therefore we we still do have an Italian diet, but back then it was even more Italian in that it consisted of pizza, a lot of pasta, and of course bread, but like that delicious Italian type of bread, which is just different. And um, so because of that, I felt sick pretty much 24 seven. And what's interesting enough is looking back, I was trying really hard to manage these symptoms. I was trying in every way because obviously when you feel sick, you want to try to get rid of these symptoms by usually someone would just pop a pill, pop an Advil and they're fine. But in my case, Advil didn't work. So what I would do was, for example, for my headaches and migraines, I would just take a rag and wet it with hot water and I'd put it on my head. And for some reason that would help. I'm pretty sure that was just psychological, but in the end, it did something. Even if it was psychological, I was desperate for, I was desperate to, for relief. And um, regarding my stomach aches, what I would do was massage my stomach and that would ease the pain a bit. But besides that, there was not much I could do. So it was actually very difficult to come to diagnosis in that a lot of doctors that I met didn't know what was going on with me. And rather, most of them were saying that these symptoms that I was experiencing were psychological, which were definitely not true. And that's one thing that makes me sad is that it took a while to get a diagnosis. So I was sick for, I would say, a couple months. And so in the end, I thankfully got diagnosed with celiac disease. But first, I visited a gastroenterologist and she was telling me how I could possibly have celiac disease and how I may need to do an endoscopy. But before I did that, I did a blood test just to make sure that I don't know the exact scientific details, but something to do with the amount of antibodies I had in my body. And they signified that I had a high chance of having celiac. Then I did an endoscopy, which was basically a camera that they put down my throat while I was asleep, thank God. And they were able to see or observe my villi, which were at the time completely flat and that is completely unhealthy when they're supposed to be up so anyways, based on the endoscopy, it was clear I had celiac disease and a couple days later my mom received a phone call where the doctor told her how I cannot have gluten anymore. So I would say my biggest challenge with celiac disease has shifted over time and that in around the time when I was in elementary school slash middle school or rather going into middle school, my biggest issue that I had with having celiac disease was in general sharing food with my friends. I would be that one kid at birthday parties who would have her own little cupcake and every other kid could share a slice of cake and enjoy the taste while I'm over here with my little cupcake wishing I could have a slice. And I'd get stared at, I'd have 
people or kids my age commenting or thinking I'm weird, things like that. And I would say now, during this time period, my biggest challenges are more in the psychological field and in the cosmetic field. So, also known as the long-term effects of celiac that are not as obvious. And these include, in my case, they include um, calcium deficiency, bone pain. I have that pretty frequently, unfortunately, and it hurts a lot. Um, I also have spotting on my teeth because of the calcium deficiency. Um, it's very hard for me to gain weight, which could be a good thing for other people, but for me, I wish I could gain weight, but it's very difficult for me to do so. So, these issues may seem minor, and I'm thankful that I don't have other symptoms, like the symptoms I was experiencing before I got diagnosed, but they are still challenges that impact me to this day. Another way that celiac disease heavily impacted me was psychologically, in that there has been a connection found between high anxiety and celiac disease, and unfortunately, I'm in that category. And so I actually was diagnosed with an anxiety disorder and I have been prescribed medication, which has not worked. Because of that, I stopped taking medication completely and found my own ways to cope with it. But I've had anxiety all my life. It's interfered many times with my decision-making, with my general happiness and Having it is just an additional burden of celiac disease. So I would say that celiac disease has impacted my social life and that it's hard for me to share food with my friends and in general people I meet. Or rather, there are very rare cases where I'm a actually able to share food with them. And in fact, there were many cases where I'm chilling with my friends and they, they offer me some of their food and then forget that I have celiac disease and that just makes me feel kind of sad because I can't participate in that way of bonding that many people participate in. Celiac disease has also most definitely impacted my school life. Back in high school it was an ongoing issue where I had to constantly bring food from home because the cafeterias perhaps they had some gluten-free items such as salad and vegetables which is better than nothing but first off there's that issue of contamination which tends to happen in a lot of restaurants and a lot of cafeterias contamination it's kind of bound to happen and it scares me so that's why i really appreciate those restaurants who label themselves as being really attentive to allergies and I adore those restaurants and that's that's kind of like my safe haven so but in general like the gluten-free items they had were usually consisted in salads and sometimes I wanted to spice it up a little so that's why I never really went to the cafeterias at my old high school and in fact, this impacted me pretty recently while I was on my college search where I actually visited a college and I ended up getting really sick after eating a soup that was apparently gluten-free, but really wasn't because once I got home, I vomited and I just felt miserable. So it's, it's definitely a struggle for me. And the main concern I have is that the cafeteria that will be in my university that I'll be attending won't be as attentive to my needs. That's why I really have to stand up for myself and my needs and make sure that I'm eating in a way that's good for my body, whether even if it's just contamination, it's still just as bad as eating gluten itself. If you take too much contaminated food inside your body, for me, it still has a pretty bad impact. So if I had to give tips for people on how to manage with celiac disease, I would say to be grateful that there's actually gluten-free food available out there because things could be far worse and that maybe there was a limited amount of gluten-free food or limited types of gluten-free food. And that's the way I look at it. So instead of thinking, 
oh I can't eat cake I can't eat donuts that most do donuts from Dunkin Donuts for example that smell delicious and I wish I could have a bite I don't think in that way anymore I think that there's other types of donuts available for me there's other types of cakes other types of bread and maybe they're not the same but they're delicious and they fuel my body just the same way Another thing we can be grateful for is that we have groups like Beyond Celiac who are actively working to find a cure for celiac disease, where there are people like my father who are constantly making plans to efficiently find a cure. So thank you Beyond Celiac and I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your summer.